Welcome class of 2033 to Kindergarten Safari. My name is Meg Killingsworth and I'm the Family Engagement Coordinator here at Chester T Elementary. And on behalf of our staff, I'd like to tell you how excited we are to have you join our Chester T family for next year. This is a slideshow with all the information that you've ever wanted to know about kindergarten. We really feel like it will answer a lot of your questions and hit upon a lot of the things you might be wondering. And we've also provided a PDF of this exact same thing so that you can go through and click the links because as we narrate it, we won't be able to do that. We hope we find that you find this information very helpful. Our kindergarten team is made up of this smiling bunch. And if you click this link, it will take you to a flip grid that will share a little bit of information about each teacher and their name. Here are some other staff members that you will want to get to know. First, we have our administration team. Mr. Boyd is our kindergarten first and second grade assistant principal. Dr. Tennis is our principal. And Ms. Gaines is our third, fourth, and fifth grade assistant principal. I introduced myself a little bit earlier. My name is Meg Killingsworth. We have Miss Donna, and she is our receptionist and buzzes everybody in through our front door. Miss Ansley is our bookkeeper and secretary, and Miss Angela is our data clerk. She's responsible for student records and welcoming new students. One thing you'll learn is that Chestity is so full of history. Because we've served the community since 1931, we have a lot of folks who went to Chestity and whose children go to Chestity and a lot of teachers who even went to Chestity. It is very rich in history. Here's a picture of the original school bell, which we bring out every year on the last day of school to ring for our fifth graders and any retirees. We're really proud of our facilities at the T and keeping them fresh and updated. Two examples of that include our playground equipment and our student restrooms. We use a lot of our extra funding each year to maintain our playground and add new pieces to excite the children about coming to school. We also have each student restroom painted in a different theme. In the kindergarten hallway, you'll find the mermaids and the pirates, whereas in other hallways, you'll find other items like sharks or bears or bees or birds or even team jerseys. Even going to the restroom is fun at Chestity. We follow the Chestity way at our school, which is be respectful, be responsible, be a problem solver. And we also use PBIS, which stands for Positive Behavioral Intervention and Support, where we focus on the good things that children are doing and reinforcing the positive behaviors versus always talking about the negatives. Students earn little tickets called Bravo Bucks for their great behavior, and they can go shopping at our school store. Each class is signed up for two days a month, but a lot of teachers have classroom volunteers take children to the store more frequently so that kids can get to the store and use their Bravo Bucks to buy items. We have an after-school program here at Chestity called Care for Kids. Our director is Deb Mason, and more information can be found at the link below. We offer this each day after school for our working parents. We also offer enrichment clubs at Chestity. They take place on Wednesdays after school from dismissal until 4 o'clock. Families can pay for students to stay after school and enjoy one of the clubs and you sign up for a club that you're interested in. So this happens um, each quarter and it'll take place for about four weeks and the menu changes. So each quarter you'll get a new menu and you can look it over and decide if your child would like to participate. Some of the enrichment clubs have included fun fitness, Minecraft, building with Legos, art, kids in the kitchen, 
um, and other great, great fun clubs. We follow the seven mindsets at our school, which are shown in this first picture. And the seven mindsets are attributes that highly successful people have and show in life. And then every month we have a high flyer ceremony. The high flyer is in recognition of Chesity Eagles. And each teacher picks two students that have exhibited the mindset of the month. So we'll have a special ceremony and invite families in to celebrate their student and get a special certificate. We also have buddy classes where our younger students pair up with our older students for reading and special projects and things that they can do together. Here are two opportunities for this summer to help your child to get better acquainted with the school. The first one is called Bus Roundup and it's on Monday, July 27th. The driver will call you a couple days in advance and tell you where to be and what time they'll be picking up and you and your child can ride the bus to school. At school, there'll be a special snack and drink and presentation and the drivers will go over bus safety. So it's a great chance to stop off at the school and see the inside of our building. Parents are going to want to make sure that your registration is complete because if it's not complete and you're missing any documents, you won't get that call by the bus driver. So that's one to definitely mark on your calendar. The other ways to get connected is to check out our website and follow us on Facebook. We do a lot of posts throughout the summer and even videos. So if your child's watching those, he or she may feel even more comfortable with getting to know our school. This is our Forsyth County Schools Learner Profile and you'll see this often in your child's education. This is our guide to ensuring that when a student graduates from high school, they'll be well-rounded and it's the foundation of our academic so as we are growing our learners, we're also working hard to work on each of these qualities, such as pursuing continuous learning and exhibiting strong personal qualities, utilizing critical and creative thinking, engaging and contributing and interacting effectively. As we teach our lessons, it's really important that students um, get better at those skills so that when they leave high school, they'll be a well-rounded person. There is a lot to study in our kindergarten curriculum. We use our ARC program, which stands for American Reading Company. And through ARC, we are able to teach a lot of different subjects and it's all integrated together. So with our phonics and reading program, students will do so much reading and listening to reading um, in order to work on skills like phonemic awareness and sight words and to build their reading fluency and comprehension. Teachers will work with small groups of students in order to build their reading skills. Students will do a lot of games and a lot of flashcards and they will bring home a ton of books that they can read with you and to you. Teachers also focus on writing with the letter of the week, uh, working on penmanship, modeling writing, interactive writing, which is writing back and forth. It's very hard for five-year-olds to get their ideas down on paper. So it takes a lot of good modeling and interacting in writing to build those skills. In math, we use a lot of hands-on activities. Students are taught in small groups. We also use games and we use manipulatives so that there are actually moving pieces and it's not all pencil and paper. Um, they do a lot of movement of pieces like blocks and cubes in order to really understand number sense and what they're doing with math concepts. We also study science and social studies in kindergarten. So topics like motion and gravity, objects in the sky, rocks and soil, living and non-living, and animals and plants are all studied in science. Whereas in social studies, students will learn their own personal information. And then they'll also learn about community helpers, good citizenship, US symbols, maps, 
skills, economy, and national holidays. Kindergarten has changed since we were growing up. As I said, ARC stands for American Reading Company. And what really works with it is that students are taught science and their subjects of reading and writing all through the books that they're reading. So students will study things like zoology um, and will learn so much about reading through that study. They'll have a morning meeting each day and they'll listen to lots of books from their teacher. They'll also um, have an independent reading component and even get to go book shopping and pick out books that they want to read and take home to read. They'll work on read alouds with you at home with family involvement and take books home to read to their families. There's lots and lots of celebrations in ARC um, and lots of special projects. So we found that students made amazing growth and progress last year using ARC. Uh, to better their language arts skills. Here are some fun pictures of the activities that students did with ARC. They had an ocean day to celebrate a study all about the ocean. And they also had a day where they went outside and investigated the great outdoors. So all of those were uh, related to ARC and what they were studying in the classroom. One of the greatest things that we have found is that students are really learning to love to read. In Forsyth County, we use a standards-based report card and rubrics. Um, and what that means is that we have all of the standards listed on the report card and it's a four point scale. So we assess language arts, math, social studies, science, work habits, and then our special area classes. And students are graded on that four point scale, a one, two, three, or four. With each standard, um, they can be quite detailed. And so a lot of them were working on the entire year. And so a student starting kindergarten should not know the whole standard. The ones and twos can be very common in the beginning of the year. And then as the year goes on and students master those standards, we see more threes. Fours are unusual to see it's really exceeding standards, um, exceeding expectations. So that's less common to see. We give out our report cards four times during the year, every nine weeks or every quarter. And that first report card, your child's teacher will really explain at the October conference. Here's an example of what the standards-based report card looks like. You can see that it's very detailed and there are a lot of standards listed. The blacked out areas show standards that are not being set, assessed at that time of the year. This slide shows how we grade on the report card. So there is a one, two, three, and four system. A one is gonna be limited achievement on the standard, whereas two is moderate. Three is consistent, like mastery of the standard. So the child is showing that they can do that standard every time. And then a four is exceeds or extends within the standards. So fours are used pretty sparingly. Um, you won't see them very often. Um, we're shooting for threes, but a two just means we're in progress of that standard. And a one means we um, need some improvement and need to work on that area. You're gonna see that four point scale on your academic areas. Um, and then the special area classes like PE and art and music are going to score children on an S for satisfactory, P for progressing, or Ns for, for needs improvement. We also have work habit grades, which would be D for does not meet, S for successful, and E for exemplary. So every nine weeks, you're gonna get a report to show you how your child is doing. Um, in class. Our county is really known for technology and using technology in the classroom and students are allowed to BYOT 
which stands for Bring Your Own Technology to School if you would like to. Here's some pictures of kindergartners working on technology. Technology is integrated in lessons in so many different ways and students use technology daily to complete work. There are a lot of things to know about BYOT or bringing your own technology. First of all, it is optional. There are a lot of parents who might not feel comfortable with sending BYOT with a five-year-old and that is absolutely okay. Um, if you do feel comfortable, just know that we have a very filtered internet in the school and our filter blocks a lot of uh, inappropriate content. There is controlled usage and established classroom rules uh, for BYOT. It is locked in the classroom when we're out of the room and it's used during computer centers. So educational apps for reading and math are really important to have installed on there. Um, we teach the responsible use of BYOT and we provide tasks for students to do on their BYOT when they bring it. Um, it's okay if you don't have a device, your child um, will have access to so many in their classroom. So no worries if you don't have one or don't feel comfortable sending. We're on technology a lot because that's kind of the way of the world these days, um, but it's not our whole day by any means. It's just great to help enhance lessons. Here's an example schedule from a kindergarten class. So students can start getting dropped off at 710. They can arrive and go to the classroom and usually they'll start with morning um, centers. So they'll check in with the teacher and then have some morning fun centers. And then we have a daily announcement that they watch on our news. We also have a morning message where they have a like class meeting um, and that's part of the ARC program where they meet and have their morning message. Then they have a language arts block. They go to a pathways class. Sometimes we say pathways or specials class and that includes PE or going to the gym, art, music, media, counseling. They meet with the counselor during the rotation. The AV stands for audio visual and then the science special. So they'll go to the pathways, which will end up probably being one of your child's favorite parts of the day. When they get back, there's some independent reading time and then they head off to lunch. We do eat early in kindergarten. So it'll be great to send a little snack for the afternoon so that they're not starving by the time they get home. After lunch, we come back and do a story and a restroom break. We have writing time and then calendar math and whole group math time. They go outside for recess to run off some of that energy and then come back in and do guided math groups where students are working in smaller groups on specific skills. And then they do social studies and science while they have their snack. And then it's time to pack up and do another read aloud. Dismissal is at 2.20 each afternoon. Here are pictures of our snack time. You can see that kids keep on working. They're either being read to or they're reading while they're having snacks so that we keep on learning. Our pathways will be a favorite of so many of your children. Our first special is the PE special. You can find Ms. Waters and Ms. Grindle in our gym to teach PE. We're moving on to our music special taught by Miss Melanie Roper. Students will learn great songs and music, and they also spend a lot of time investigating and playing instruments. Here is our art room with our teacher, Miss Hubbard. Students will produce amazing masterpieces here. Miss Reese teaches our audiovisual special or AV. Students will work on computer projects and all sorts of technology with Ms. Reese. Ms. Johnson teaches our science special. 
She's known for our farm to table program where we have gardens and actually grow some of our own spices and vegetables for our cafeteria. She provides very hands-on activities and has even raised baby chicks with the kids. Here's Miss Wiggins in our media center. She teaches the students all sorts of reading lessons. They get to interact with technology, research, and checking out books each time they visit the media center. And the children will get to go to a counseling special each rotation and get to see our counselor, Ms. Fondo. She works on great skills like following directions and listening, being good friends, um, solving problems, and all sorts of things that kids need a little extra attention with. Now, another fun part of your child's day will be lunch. This is definitely a favorite. So you can pay, um, put money on your child's lunch account with a check, with cash or online. If you write a check, you may wanna put that or cash in an envelope and it can go in your child's folder. And you just want to label it with your child's name and what the money's for and how much you sent. Um, online, we use My Payments Plus and that will take a credit card. If you need to pay with a credit card, the only way to do that is online using My Payments Plus. And you can find that on Chesity's website. Teachers actually don't keep track of account balances. Only Deb Mason, our cafeteria manager, knows that information. But if you're curious about your child's account balance, if you reach out to your child's teacher, um, we can reach out to Deb Mason or you can reach out to Deb Mason um, yourself by emailing her or calling to check on an account balance or an account question. If you want to join us for lunch, you are welcome to come any day. And this picture is a picture of our stage, which has all these tables so that special family guests can come and enjoy lunch with a little bit maybe more space or in a little bit quieter setting than at the lunch table. We just ask that when you come, meet us in the cafeteria rather than coming to the classroom. So if you come to the cafeteria at your child's lunchtime or a little bit before and stand right there at the stage, then when they come walking in, you'll be sure to see them. We also love if you'll say goodbye in the lunchroom rather than walking back with us. Um, we often have a planned activity that comes next, and it also really helps to save tears. Sometimes five-year-olds have a hard time saying goodbye to a family member, um, so when they continue the walk down the hall into the classroom, it can make it even harder. So a quick goodbye in the lunchroom is, is really helpful. Like I said, you're invited to eat on our stage. Now, we do have ice cream. It's $1.10. It can't be charged. So if your child has a negative balance, we won't keep your child from eating lunch. We'll definitely give the lunch, but we won't give the ice cream. And again, that can cause some tears with five-year-olds. So it's great um, just to have that explanation. Just make sure there's money on the account. If you sign up for My Payments Plus, it can send you um, a warning when you start to get too low and you'll get an email uh, when it gets to a certain point and you can set that. So most of our kindergarten classes have one day each week where they'll be able to enjoy an ice cream treat. Kids are more than welcome to bring lunch from home and you can pack that lunch uh, in a lunch box or in a bag, however you would like that. And then they can also buy lunch at school. Now, sometimes parents want their children to drink milk, um, but they don't want to send it in the lunchbox because it might not be cold by the time it's lunchtime. Children can always buy uh, milk or drink. Um, we even have lots of fruits and vegetables. So if you wanted your child to get uh, extra side item, that is completely possible. Not a problem, even if you're packing lunch. Um, so lots of good options there. So let's take a look at how we're going to get school lunch. Meet Miss Ann as your child goes through the beginning of the serving line. They grab a napkin 
and then they decide on what they would like for lunch. There are always lots and lots of great options. There's always a hot lunch option, and on this day, it's chicken nuggets with a roll. There's also always a peanut butter and jelly option, and then we have salad. There will be a couple other choices mixed in. Children will have four to five choices each day that they can pick from for their lunch. They also get to choose up to three fruits and vegetables. And these are all offered. They can pick what they would like and the lunch ladies will ensure that they have some fruits and vegetables on their tray. Here are more pictures of all those healthy options. And we even have lots of options for our drink. So it's no longer just white milk or chocolate milk. Your child can choose strawberry milk, vanilla milk, low fat milk, and even orange juice. And here is a crowd pleaser, the ice cream freezer. Students will have about one day a week where they can choose ice cream and the teacher will let you know which day of the week that'll be. Here you can see students going through the line, getting their napkin and their fork, and then picking out what they're gonna have for lunch. Each student will be given a student number that they'll put in on the keypad. Now, no worries, because in the very beginning of the year, they don't do any of that themselves. The cashiers will help them, but as the year goes on and they get a little bit more ready and more mature, they'll put in their number. And a lot of times the cashiers walk them through, but they do just that very, very patiently. Students will be able to slide over and pick out their condiments as well. So ranch is a big favorite and offered most days, and then they can get their ketchup or mustard or taco sauce or whatever else they need with the lunch provided. We teach the kids to stay in their seats and to raise their hand when they need help opening items or they have questions or need a napkin or forgot their fork. And we have lots and lots of helpers in the lunchroom um, to help kindergartners with anything that they need during lunch. And when you come, you're going to find a table on the stage and get to eat lunch on the stage. So if you want to see your child light up, come visit one day for lunch. You are welcome any day. Moving on to our clinic where you will meet Nurse Janet. Nurse Janet is our school nurse. She has ER background and really is great at helping kids and also um, a kind of triaging them based on need. So she'll take care of boo-boos or she'll call you when they're not feeling well um, and help sort out what we need to do. It's really important that you notify both Nurse Janet and your child's teacher of any allergies and any medical needs. All medication that's left at school must have a form signed by you. Um, Nurse Janet has to handle all medication. Teachers never ever administer any meds. Um, please don't send cough drops or any medicine with your child. Anything that your child might need during the course of the day must be brought, on, brought in by you and then a form will be uh, filled out so that Nurse Janet has the proper directions on what to do with the medication. Uh, we'll send your child to the clinic if he or she gets sick at school and if they go home or if they wake up not feeling well, they need to be fever free without any medication in their system for 24 hours before they come back. Your child um, is probably going to get more sick in kindergarten than any other year. And that um, is because he or she's building up that immune system. So it's really, really important that your child comes to school each and every day and is here on time each and every day possible. Um, just because we need to prepare for they're probably going to be a little bit more sick this year. I remember going to kindergarten and I learned to write my name and play well with others. And I think that's about it. 
So these days, kindergarten has changed greatly. It has become very, very academic. It um, has increased rigor with our state standards and also the Forsyth County guidelines for our instruction. Um, we teach not in one big group all day, but the majority of our day is taught in small differentiated groups. And our instructions assessment driven, meaning we give a quick test to find out where students are and then go from there. We know that kindergartners are so amazing and can learn so much. And so um, practicing these learn skills is very important in those small groups. Um, exposing students to the standards is important because, believe it or not, they can do so very much. So differentiation is assessing students from where they are. So that's where that instruction is assessment driven. We assess where they are and then we move them from there. So here is what differentiation and small group teaching look like. You'll have a class full of students and you'll have a teacher working with a group who is working on the same skill kind of at the same speed based on that assessment. Um, in kindergarten, you have your kindergarten teacher working with one group and then you have the kindergarten instructional assistant working with another group. In a lot of classrooms, we have parent volunteers come in and they may even have a group and then you can have an independent group. But throughout that block of time, students are going to rotate through the teachers and the instructional assistant and through any volunteers and just have a little bit of the independent time. But by doing that and teaching with differentiation, students who need that enriching and an extra push and challenge can work with students um, who are like them and also need that challenge. And students who are working right where they need to be can be working with students who are right where they are. And then students who might need a little extra support or need to go back and reteach the skill also have that opportunity. Calling all car riders, we have a large car rider line and you can expect very heavy traffic the first two weeks of school as more people are dropping off and also as we are tweaking our car line and making adjustments to make it faster. Um, we have a lot of car riders all throughout the year. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the bus is always a great option and will help with um, any frustration with car line if you've got work to get to. Our car line starts dropping off at 710. That's when kids can start unloading from cars and that goes until 740. So children should be in their classroom by 740 when the tardy bell rings. That's an ideal situation. That's what we would love to see. For dismissal, uh, you're gonna hop in line and students will start coming out between 210 and 215 and that goes until about 240 to 245. Our teachers will deliver children to our car rider line and to the buses. So this is just a picture of classes coming down the hallway as the teacher walks them right to where they need to go. Here's just more pictures. You can see our car line and then students come out and walk the hallway to go out the doors and meet um, for cars to pick up. Once they get to the sidewalk, the teachers tell them which cone to go to and they'll stand at the cone. Cars will pull up to that cone and students can get in safely. We always have lots of staff out on the sidewalks to help with our car rider line and to ensure safety. Calling all bus riders. Again, teachers will walk their classes down the hallways to load our buses. Our buses load in the back of the building and along the side. As students get onto their bus, they are always expected to give a handshake, a hug, or high five to say goodbye. And then that way the teacher knows that that child went right to that right bus but our teachers walk the students directly to the correct bus. Here's more examples of smiling faces at the end of our day. 
parents often wonder how a five-year-old will find their way from the buses in the morning all the way to the kindergarten hallway. But no fear, along the hallways, our teachers have put what we like to call breadcrumbs or their class logo. So all along the hallway, they put their stickers so that as students come off the bus, they can follow those stickers all the way to the kindergarten hallway and find their classroom. Also know that we have a lot of staff members stationed throughout the hallways um, to help students who need help finding classrooms. And we also have older students who stand in the hallways and help patrol and help little ones get to the right classrooms. So no fear, no worry. We will get them to their classroom. They can do it. People often ask how they can help during the summer with getting ready for kindergarten. Here is a list of some skills that we would really hope um, that kindergartners are working and in progress of mastering. So practicing letter names and sounds, practice writing that first name, um, number ID from zero up to 10, but in random order. So if you take note cards and write your numbers from zero to 10 and scramble them up, that's a great way to practice. Knowing phone numbers and birthdays is great. The colors and shapes such as circle, rectangle, square, and triangle, just those simple shapes is wonderful. Practice counting from one to 20. Um, getting to your library to get summer resources, books, and activities is wonderful. Reading to your child often, checking out our Facebook page, and showing them videos of our school. So here is a virtual tour that they can see the inside of Chastity. And there's also an intro video, um, and they can just learn a little bit more about Chastity by watching those. Some important school policies include transportation. First off is if there is a change in transportation from the regular way, and what you'll do is at open house when you meet the teacher, you will share the way that your child is going to get home each day. So whether it's bus and you'll share the bus number or it's a car rider, um, or after school or daycare, you will share with the teacher how your child gets home. And then your teacher will record that on a chart and keep that um, on a list handy for every day. If it varies during the week and they go one way Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and a different way Tuesday, Thursday, that's fine. When there is a change other than what the teacher has on record, it must be a handwritten note. Um, emails and phone calls will not be accepted. And the reason why is there's many times where a teacher's out sick and um, may not get to email. So if we allow emails um, for transportation changes, there's a good chance that they're busy teaching or they're out that day and don't get it. And then we have a problem with getting your child to where they need to go safely. Also, a lot of times during the day, the teacher cannot answer the phone because they're so busy teaching. And so voicemails and calling into the classroom to change isn't going to work either. So it really needs to be pre-planned if there's going to be a change and just write a note and put it in your child's folder, letting the teacher know of the change. Um, another rule on transportation is we don't allow any checkouts after 2 p.m. So if your child has an appointment, a dentist, a doctor, or you've got something that you've got to get to and you need to check your child out, please do it before 2 o'clock. Um, the reason there is because dismissal begins shortly after and it can be really hard to get a hold of the teacher as she's trying to get everybody lined up and ready for car rider line and get to buses on time. So it just helps with a lot of chaos and confusion not happening if uh, checkouts happen before 2 p.m. Also on absences, if your child misses school um, and is sick, not a problem. What we need from you is to write a note within five days and um, that will excuse the absence. Now, 
if you take your child to the pediatrician or to the dentist or to urgent care and you're able to get a doctor's note, that's really good. Because after so many um, handwritten notes from home, then um, you could get questioned on why there's so many absences, just if there's an excess of absences. Also know that three tardies or three checkouts count as one absence. So it's really important to be at school every day possible. It's important to be there on time. It's important not to have to check out unless you absolutely have to. Um, and like I said earlier, your child's going to be sicker this year, more than likely. And so it's really important that each and every day that your child can be at school, um, that they're there. If you forget to write a note about the absence, um, what happens is even if your child is sick after five unexcused absences, so that means we got no reason for the absence, you'll get a letter. And the first letter comes from the school and the social worker saying, hey, you have quite a few absences. Um, the second letter after that, um, when there's 10 days absence, it's just, it's not as nice of a letter. And I just hate to see our sweet families get letters um, that are talking about truancy and not kids not being at school when they need to be. So we take attendance super seriously at Chesity. It's really, really important to be there. There will be days that your child cries or says, I don't want to go to school. Five-year-olds get very, very tired, and that can be a big part of, of not wanting to go. But it's important that they come to school each and every day that they possibly can and that they're truly not sick and that there's truly not um, a family emergency or something going on that would prevent them from getting to school. Because you cannot make up those missed days. It's really, um, it's really impossible. We can't send worksheets home that are going to make up the conversations and the lessons that they have while they're at school. Here are the ways to communicate and find out what's going on in the classroom. There will be a daily folder that goes back and forth and any notes that you have for the teacher or money can be put in that folder um, so that the teacher doesn't have to look through the backpack to find everything. That makes it easier. You will receive a newsletter that includes the curriculum and important dates and reminders. Um, any special notices and events, and that will come home on Fridays. Email is a great favorite of teachers because it's usually a quick uh, reply. And so always feel free to email your child's teacher or write a note um, for transportation changes, excuses for absence, or anything else. You can write a note and put it in your child's folder. You can call and leave a voicemail and you'll receive your child's extension in August once we start. Just know that teachers are usually unable to answer the phone during class and so it oftentimes if you leave a voicemail won't be returned until the end of the day or even the next day if the teacher has meetings or has to leave for their own doctor's appointment or whatnot. And then you'll get to know it's learning as the year goes on. And that is our online learning platform that we use where teachers will post lesson plans and newsletters and homework and learning links. And we've become very, very familiar with it's learning this year with our extended online learning plan. Here's just a quick look of it's learning and the teacher will post directions on it's learning so that students can follow the directions and then do the learning assignment. And before our extended online learning, kindergarten had Wi-Fi Wednesday, where they'd have a little activity every Wednesday where students could hop on its learning and become more familiar with the learning platform and practice um, their skills. Now, our kindergartners are probably pros using uh, its learning in this extended online learning that we've had this year. There are lots of ways that we'll communicate with you. Um, Facebook is a biggie. If you're on Facebook, like us on Chestity. We also have our parent portal, which will send out messengers. And you can set the notifications on your parent portal to receive a text or an email or even a voicemail when we send out updates from the school. And we send this quite often, so it's a nice way to stay connected. Each month, we will publish a newsletter from Chesity that'll include things coming up 
and articles and things um, to keep you in the know. We do lots and lots of videos. We have a Facebook Friday video that we release each week. And then there's lots of other videos that we have on our website and also that we'll put on Facebook to keep you informed. And the teachers will send home a gold daily folder um, or a daily folder each um, with each child to communicate back and forth. And then here's an example of one of our newsletters, um, including all the information. So lots and lots of ways that we work on communicating with families. If you are not on Facebook, it's not a problem. If you go to this link right here and click on that, that will take you to our Chesity website. And if you go to the very bottom of our Chesity website, there are three buttons, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and you can click on Facebook and see all of our posts. We also have a lot of our videos on YouTube and you can look through videos there. Families always want to know how to help their child in kindergarten, and teachers have said one of the main ways is to check that daily folder. Check it, empty it, read through the papers that come home, look over graded work, maybe even talk about the graded work with your child, especially if you see things that need to be corrected. Um, read the weekly newsletter so you know what's going on. Discuss each day, ask what was special or how was your child's behavior? Or what was your child's favorite part of the day? Um, please, please contact your child's teacher when needed. We believe strongly in partnerships. And so if there's something that you wanna to talk to your teacher about, please, please reach out to your child's teacher. We have conferences in October, a parent-teacher conference, which is a one-on-one -on -one conference but we also offer academic parent teacher team meetings three times throughout the year. And academic parent teacher team meetings are actually class conferences where the whole class comes at one time. And this happens three times throughout the year, so you're getting that much more information. So coming to the parent teacher conference, coming to those APTT meetings, three times throughout the year will really give you a lot of information about your child and ways to help at home. So when we give you the tools to help at home and we show you the skills that can be practiced, if you can practice those, that's wonderful. Even five minutes a couple of days a week makes a huge difference. If you are able to volunteer, we would love to have you. We love volunteers at Chestity and um, come for lunch. Like we've said, any day you are welcome to come for lunch. And coming into the school shows your child that the school is important and they love to see you here. Like I said, APTT is Academic Parent Teacher Team Meetings. And this is a picture of a class having a conference all at one time. So the teacher puts up a graph and shows a skill that they are working on and how the class is doing on that skill. You receive a secret number for your child. So you are the only person who knows that number um, other than the teacher. And so you can see how your child's performing on that skill, uh, where the expectation is, and how your child's performing up against the rest of the class. So it's really insightful to know, okay, here's where my child is, and then here are ways that we can practice. So sometimes people will say, you know, I really like the one-on-one -on -one parent teacher conferences better. Absolutely, we totally understand that, and we offer those. We have those in October, and we expect 100% attendance there. Uh, APTT is an additional meeting. Um, three actually additional meetings to come in and to really find out how your child is doing in addition three other times. So most schools just have the October conference and then there's an optional one offered in March. We have that October conference and then an optional one in March and then the three APTT meetings in addition. So we really get you in to share that information and then help partner with how to help at home. We have lots of ways to get involved and lots of parent leadership and volunteer opportunities. So if you are interested in serving on any councils, 
Um, I am a great person to help you get connected. Um, we have a parent advisory council, which uh, we share information and ask for feedback from parent leaders. And then there's lots of ways to volunteer as well. Have a little menu here of ways that you can get involved and this will go out in August so that you can take a look at it and kind of see hmm, this way is what suits me. For instance, I love taking pictures. I want to be on the yearbook committee or I'd like to be a part of PTO and help them or I want to come into the classroom and help weekly. Um, we even have Watchdog Dads, which is for our dads to commit to one day a year and come in. They spend the day um, on the school news and in the car line, uh, go into the lunchroom and help them with duty, and then visiting several classrooms and helping students. So we have so many ways to get connected, and we would really love to have your help if you're able. So when we asked for some advice from our kindergarten kids, the things that they had to say, are things like school's fun and you get to learn so much and be respectful, be responsible, be a problem solver. It's amazing the things that they can recite that first day or two of school. Um, they would tell you to do your best and you're going to learn a lot and you'll learn to read, which is unbelievable, but they really do learn to read in kindergarten. They might say something like, listen to your teacher and you are going to be tired. And that's the truth. Uh, students in the beginning of the year especially will be exhausted. So expect to put them to bed a little bit earlier. Uh, being in the bed by seven o'clock is not crazy um, at the beginning of the year. And then as they adjust and get used to the rigorous schedule, they'll do a little bit better and not be so tired. Here's some more fun with kindergarten. Lots of celebrations. The Eagle was celebrating reading. Uh, students had a farm breakfast after they studied the farm and they actually went on a field trip to Kinsey Farm uh, right around pumpkin season. You'll see that chastity is so fun. We celebrate lots of things such as Dr. Seuss Day, our 100th day at school, and even an ugly sweater day around the holidays. We've had farm breakfasts and Dr. Seuss crazy days. We've had our ROTC collecting for Toys for Tots. We get to dress up for the 50th day of school. Um, first grade does a big Wizard of Oz day. Kindergarten gets to see Emerald City, which is fun and see the characters. We have fundraisers and we even have some fun with our school resource officer, Officer Snell. We would love for you to help us to get to know your child better. So by clicking this quick survey, you can fill out its five questions to answer, and it'll really help us know your child better and some of the characteristics of your child and some of the skills your child has already. You can expect mail this summer. Your child will get a postcard welcoming back to school with open house information. Our open house is going to be Tuesday, August 4th, so you'll want to mark your calendar for Tuesday, August 4th to come see the classroom and meet your teacher. And the times haven't been decided, but in the past we've usually done 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Um, so it'll be that afternoon time so that you can slip in sometime in there to drop in. You don't stay the whole time and see the classroom and meet the teacher. You'll also stop by the cafeteria for your car rider tag, any after school care information, um, lunchroom information, and to sign up to volunteer, and much, much more. Our first day of school this year will be on Thursday, August 6th. By clicking these links, you can find out more information about Kindergarten Bus Roundup on Monday, July 27th, our Care for Kids After School information, cafeteria information, and even the student calendar for next year. So that has been a lot of information. And we've also got our PDF version of this so that you can scroll through it and see just the slideshow with the active links. And you can click on those links to get to whatever is needed. Remember that we have our question and answer session on Facebook Live on Thursday, April 23rd at 6 o'clock p.m. 
or on Wednesday, May 6th at 11 o'clock a.m. And you can join us for one or for both um, of those sessions if needed or not at all if you're feeling great. We've also included a link to a Padlet and the Padlet is just a tool um, that we used in order to gather the questions. So as you're having questions, you can click that link to type those questions in, and that way we'll know kind of what questions you'll have when we do our Facebook Live on those two dates. So we have our steps to success where you'll go through and you're gonna wanna make sure that um, you have looked at each one of those steps and um, completed each one. The one that says the kindergarten slideshow is complete, so you can definitely mark one off of your list. And on the PDF version, you will see um, this checklist again of the slideshow PDF, and that's just so that the links are active and you can find them easily. So in closing, we are looking forward to a great year. We work very hard to keep you informed and teach your child the way we would want someone to teach our own children. So please let us know whenever you have questions or concerns because we are so excited about partnering with you. We're also super excited to meet your sweet children next year. Thank you for allowing us to work with your child. We value your trust on this journey. And thank you, thank you for joining us for Kindergarten Safari and learning all this new information.